Hello fellow problem solvers. So today I'm going to be doing a problem from the European Girls Math Olympiad 2013 problem number four. This is a very decently cool number theory problem, easy to medium, which I suggest you try out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour, not more than two hours. If you'd like to go along with us, give us a go for the next 10 minutes. So what do we have? Find all integers a and b positives such that this polynomial is an integer for three consecutive values, which means really that we're going to have an n such that b divides n minus 1 to the fifth plus a, b divides n to the fifth plus a, and b divides n plus 1 to the fifth plus a. That's pretty much what this means. And I'm writing n minus 1 and plus 1 because then it's easier to do subtractions and stuff like that. So this is, in fact, equal to n to the fifth minus 5n plus, I believe, what does it go? How does it go? It goes 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. You know, you write the Pascal's triangle just to make sure that you don't mess anything up. Oh, okay, it's not that scary. 10, actually, n to the fourth, 10n cubed minus 10n squared plus 5n, and then minus 1. Yeah, it's a fifth power plus a. We're going to have n to the fifth plus 5n plus 10n cubed minus, actually plus all of this, plus this, plus 1 plus a. And now, what are we going to do? Well, let's subtract, let's add so that we get rid of the minuses and have less things to deal with on this side. When we subtract this from this, we get the, actually this from this. Actually, what is, I don't know what the correct grammatical way to say if I'm subtracting, if I'm doing a minus b. I'm subtracting b from a. Okay, so I'm subtracting this from this. Makes sense. And what I'll be left with is b divides 10 n to the power of four. This is n to the power of three. 10 n to the power of 4 plus 20 n squared plus 2. Now subtract it, so I have this thing right here. And B's, is B even? Actually, pause for two minutes, ask yourself, is B even? And the answer is no, because this is, one of these numbers is odd. As simple as that, so B is not even. And so we can, in fact, divide by 2, because b and 2 have nothing in common. So b divides this thing right here. Next question. Can we factor this? Does not seem likely at this point. So let's continue on with I'm thinking maybe what is n congruent to modulo b? Right. Does that tell us anything interesting like that thing to the fifth is minus a? I mean, that doesn't actually really help help us get to anywhere. So now let's add these together and we'll have that see what else we have. We have and I can divide by two right away. So I'll have n to the fifth plus 10 n cubed plus 5n plus a. Okay, now I can subtract this to get rid of the n to the fifth. Like, um, what I'm trying to do at every single turn is get rid of more of these, have less variables instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, variables, actually, these are not variables. Like, there's two variables, a and n and a, but less things of different powers. Are those variables? I don't know. My English is getting very weak today. So what happens when we subtract this from this? We get that b divides n to the fifth is over, a is gone, 10 and cubed plus 5n. Okay, so now this is b divides 5n times 2n squared plus 1. Okay. Now, does b have anything in common with 5? Pause for two minutes and figure that out. 
if say five divided b, and that's what it means for b to have any, something in common with five, we would have, what is this congruent to modulo five? Well, n to the power of four is congruent to one modulo five, unless n is divisible by five, which means two of these would be congruent, so n to the fifth is congruent to n modulo five. So this would be congruent to this modulo five, so this would be congruent to n minus one plus a modulo five, n plus a modulo five, you have then five divides one, once you subtract, not true. So b and five have nothing in common. What about b and n? If b and n share the, if say a prime divided n and then divide a b, then that prime would divide a, but then from here that prime would divide one, a contradiction. So b and n also share nothing in common and we have b divides two n squared plus one. And now we can <laughs> use that here. Thank you very much. So this, huh, how could we, maybe we can use this here actually, now that I'm thinking maybe we did not need to do this, this amount of subtraction, because we have now b divides, first and foremost, 10 n squared plus 20. And so 10 n to the fourth plus n 20 n squared. Wait, what? No, not plus 20, uh, plus five n squared. So now when I subtract these two, I'll get that b divides, what's called 15 n squared plus two. Now this is going to be also divides huh, 14 n. So b divides, let's get it down to 14 n plus 14. I subtract 14, I get n squared minus 12. And then I multiply this by two, which is divisible by n squared minus 24. Now, if I subtract these two, I get b divides five. So I'm, let's double check our work because it feels fishy to me that we've got this. I invite you here to pause for five, 10 minutes and try to push the problem further. Actually, we've done a bunch of work. Now you do some work and here's the next step. And the mistake was actually in here. It's if it's minus 14, then here it's minus seven. So what we have is divides squared minus five. And now this is two n minus uh, what's called 10. And now we get that B also divides 10 and actually no, it divides two n squared plus one. Subtract this from this and you get that B divides 11. So B, we've now found out, has to be either one or 11. Now, if B is one, then pretty much this is n to the fifth plus A, we're done. But what if it's 11? Do we have an N such and then corresponding? We need to find all positive integers A and B for this, for which this is true. So let's look at maybe remainders modulo 11, X to the power of five. What do we have? It's like I'm preparing for that. So, we have x to the 10th minus one, this is divisible by 11 if n isn't divisible by 11, okay? So that means, and here, if n, what, n is not divisible by 11, otherwise, actually, yeah, otherwise n plus one wouldn't, if a would have to be, and then we'd get a contradiction. So a is not divisible by b. So we also know that then this x won't be. And this is the same as x to the fifth minus one times x to the fifth plus one. 11 divides this for every single x. That is not divisible by 11. And so we have that x to the fifth is either one or minus one modulo 11. Which means this thing will be congruent to either one or minus one when divided by 11, which means a has to be one of one or minus one modulo 11. So A has to be of the form 11T plus or minus one. For AT, that's a natural number or A has to be one, right? So now, what are we going to do? Well, we need to find what? The corresponding and whether or not they exist. So how do you know if X and fifth is going to be one or minus one? Well. There is 
There are a couple of ways of going about. This one is actually calculating it. Another one is saying if x is equal to some a squared modulo 11. So if a so if x is a quadratic, what's it called, remainder, quadratic residue modulo 11, then we'll have x to the fifth is congruent to a to the tenth modulo 11. a to the tenth is 1, and so x is 1. And in fact, there's an if and only if statement here, like f, if and only if x is a um, quadratic residue modulo 11, we'll get this. So we can actually like figure out, calculate x squared instead of x to the fifth. Though really, all up to you. I'm just going to write them down. Now I'll say 1 is x and x to the fifth. 1 is 1. So then I have 2 is equal to 32, which is 33 minus 1. 3 is equal to uh, 243 which is 1, 4 is equal to 32 squared, which is 1. I'm right, right? I'm 42 squared. Not 42, 32 squares. 5 is equal to, what do we have with 25 is equal to, 25 is 4, is 3, times 3 is 9, 9 times 5 is 45, so 5 is a 1. Okay, we have five, We have consecutive 1s. And by virtue of this, right, plus and minus 3. Now we have a minus 3 as well. A minus 3, a minus 4, a minus 5. They'll be congruent to minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. So we'll be able to figure this out. What is minus 3, minus 4, and minus 5? Well, minus 5 is a 6, a 7, and an 8. If I was literally patient just to write down three more residues, we'd be done. But now we know that if for n is equal to, there exists three consecutive integers, yes. So for a equal to 11t plus 1, we're going to have a b11. So for 11t plus 1, we're going to need a minus 1. We'll just have n is, n minus, n is the three consecutives are 6, 7, 8. And for 11t minus 1, we're going to have 3, 4, 5. And that finishes us up the problem right there. That's it. QED. Bye bye, baby. Uh, it's a cool problem. Now, with theory. And I think it's cool because you're playing around with this divisibility. That's what makes it cool. And then you, you're sort of at every point, you're seeing, okay, what can I get rid of? It's very technical in that nature, in that respect. And it works out. That's why I believe this is a great problem for you to build technique. I hope you've learned something here. And as always, thanks for problem solving.